hey, what's up? David Browse's Valley Strength. And I guess I'm doing a little vlog this week. Uh, I think this is my first vlog since actually moving over here to Cyprus. Um, as you can see, I got a little photography studio that I'm, that I'm working on here. Uh, obviously, Avance's stuff has, has gone really, really well. So um, investing more and being able to do stuff like that. So this probably, this is not going to be my normal studio set up for, you know, coaching kind of stuff, but I wanted to, to see what this looked like in the context of photography. And even, you know, I can do some, some product shots like for SPD, um, advances, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so kind of just checking out what this, uh, what this look might, might look like for, for all that. So, um, I, yeah, I guess, I guess like little, updates stuff uh, to, to get things going with this. Talk about Raw Nationals and my future within USAPL. Um, as you guys saw, I, I, I'm doing a photo shoot, product shoot for the new colorways for Advances coming out and the high tops. Um, as much as I liked joking around about the high top stuff uh, being tall socks or whatever, uh, the high tops are very real. I don't know exactly when they're coming out. They're, they're currently in production. From what I understand, they'll be coming out mid-February at the earliest. They might be coming out at the same time that we restock the black and the white low tops, as well as coming out with the blue colorway at that point. So all that should be mid-February. Um, if the high tops are not coming out in that launch, it'll be shortly thereafter. So so hopefully very very soon those are those are coming, um, and I'll, I'll have a review on that. I I don't I don't want this channel to turn into just you know, Avanza's shoe review stuff. Uh, but life has been busy recently. So um, planning on getting back to real coaching content next week. I have a couple good videos planned, I think. Um, the upcoming one that I'm planning on doing is on junk volume and, and really how to maximize your training within that. that. That was planned for this week, but I wanted to invest the time, I guess, into the USAPL stuff since that is relevant at the moment. Uh, I was planning on switching these videos, but here we are. Um, so, so that I, I think is probably going to be the, the big topic. But then after that, after the, the junk volume video, I'm going to be working with, uh, Sean Harris, the owner of Rise. He's been conducting some research on bracing stuff and, and, uh, going to hopefully put together, uh, originally it was going to be just a beltless deadlift, kind of like talking about that conceptually. And honestly, just like, you know, I've been joking around on my Instagram stories about that stuff. I'm probably closer than people think to beltless deadlifts being a, a good thing for, for more people. Um, so anyway, I think that'll be an interesting video. Gonna actually hopefully conduct some, you know, experiments, I guess, to come up with a, a real, hopefully conclusive idea of like what really good bracing is and then like really how we create pressure and the differences between lifts specifically. So um, I'm excited to, to do all of that stuff. So um, yeah, right now. USAPL Raw National sign up was two days ago, I think. Um, today is Wednesday. I guess it happened yesterday night. Mon Monday night, Tuesday morning. Uh, so it went live at midnight, which I think is dumb anyway, especially for a US based event. You know, you should do it in the middle of the day. But I didn't get in. I didn't intend on staying up. I was never going to stay up. Uh, which, by the way, if people are complaining about not getting in but also didn't stay up, I think you just should have stayed up. That's my first point. Um, but I have been contemplating leaving the USAPL and going over to Powerlifting America and hopefully having a trajectory into the IPF stuff. Now, there's some very, very good competitors over there. I have been hurt. Uh, I was intending on using this year within the USAPL to give myself a bit of a break. Um, you know, obviously guys like Ashton, uh, you know, other very, very good 105, 110 lifters. Michael Davis has already been over in Powerlifting America. He's been hurt, but he's looking like he's getting better. You know, like there's just, there's competitors over there that I, I don't see as deep of a roster within the USA, within USA Powerlifting. There's good lifters, but the people that are better than me are in Powerlifting America. Like, you know, it's kind of as simple as that. So it, it really comes down from my perspective, on how much I value head-to-head -head competition, which, I mean, I do, I'm a competitor here, but the guys that are in front of me are, are a good bit in front of me at the moment, at least, right? Like, especially when I'm not healthy. And so I wanted to give myself that chance to, to get healthy and kind of decide where the best exposure 
was going to be for me personally, right? Because like at this point in my career, I, you know, I'm certainly trying to do the best I can, but like realistically, I don't know that I'll outpace guys like Ashton or whoever. And so finding that competitiveness on, you know, the level I think is relevant to me, but, but also that gives me good presence to do stuff like this, to be able to get in front of people, for people to learn my name, to come to my YouTube channel, to hire me for coaching, all that kind of stuff. And up until this point, USA Powerlifting has been a very, very good platform for that. And I haven't felt the need to switch over when a lot of those Powerlifting American meets are smaller. Um, they're, they're not quite as you know hyped up and everything. There's not as many eyes on them because they're just a road for the, the bigger guys to get to Sheffield, essentially. Um, that is changing, right? Like, especially after this year's USA Powerlifting Nationals, many of the top guys have left. And I'm one of the few that, again, was planning on sticking around and mostly from a health perspective. Um, but still, there's a very good argument to be made, which by the way, if you're a lifter watching this, that's not like a top, I mean, top 10 is, is even probably too broad. If you're, you're, if you're not like a top five competitor, I would still say that USA Powerlifting is probably still the better option for you at the moment because there's a lot more, there's a lot better infrastructure for local competitions. Um, you're gonna find those a lot more regularly, obviously upward trajectory, which we'll talk about, <laughs> but has been good within the USA, within USA powerlifting to get to those other meets. Um, and there's a bit of a void at the top right now. Like you can make a name for yourself pretty well uh, within USA powerlifting. So I wouldn't, you know, jump ship just because bigger people are. So USA powerlifting though, four raw nationals opened it up to quite literally everyone, meaning that you don't have to have a qualified, you don't, you don't have to meet their qualifying total to get into Raw Nationals or, or to sign up for Raw Nationals is, is the point. You do have to meet a minimum total to actually go to the competition, but to sign up for the meet, you could have never done a USA Powerlifting meet ever in your life and signed up for Raw Nationals. A lot of people did. I, I think from the numbers that I've seen, it was like one out of every five or something. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but they, there was a good amount of people that, that signed up for Raw Nationals that have never competed in USA Powerlifting, have no total, um, or at least a total that doesn't meet the minimum at this point. So they're, they're planning to do a competition and hopefully meet that minimum total and get in. But the problem is a lot of those people won't. Now, I don't have a big issue with, I have no issue with the people who did that and I mean, that's the rules. USA Powerlifting made that rule. I think it's a dumb rule from USA Powerlifting, but from the people who actually did it and signed up, I mean, there's no hate with that. Like, I mean, do what you want to do. Uh, that was USA Powerlifting's fault. But there have been suggestions forever on what people should, or what USA Powerlifting should do to make nationals a better event uh, or, or emphasize the head-to-head -head competition and emphasize being a national champion. And even like the process to get in, it was, a, it was bad last year that you know, they announced a, a deadline, you know, like overnight a bunch of people signed up and a lot of good lifters didn't go. I think again, those people should have just signed up earlier, but it is what it is. Then later they, they said, okay, all the pros get in. So all the pros, including myself, will get an invite to this one, assuming that, that I haven't gotten that invite yet, but they've announced that. So it should, it does look like the good people will get invitations, but that should have been the case at the very beginning. And we've been saying this for a long time to USA Powerlifting. And uh, you know, I, I think that there's conspiracy theories on USA Powerlifting doing this as a money grab or whatever for people that, that had signed up and won't hit the qualifying total and end up being out. I don't think that, I think they're just dumb. I posted on my story, uh, I forget exactly the, the exact uh, you know quote here, um, but it's don't attribute to malice what can be uh, uh, appropriately assigned to stupidity, right? And I just think the USA Powerlifting is too dumb to be able to come up with conspiracies like that. I think they're just stupid with stuff like this, despite being told, over and over and over again that like these are the problems that are going to show up and they did. So at this point, my, my plan going in was if I get in, if I sign up for all nationals, if I'm able to do all nationals, great. Like if I, if I wake up in the morning and I can get in, awesome, I'll sign up. But I don't know even at this point that if I get an invitation that I'm going to do it. 
Um, you know, things are changing within USA Powerlifting. The Pro Series, as far as I know, is not going to exist yet next year, and that's a really big problem. Like, I didn't fully understand the Pro Series for the most part. Uh, I think it was scored pretty dumb as well. Uh, and, and I think they've said that they're going to be making changes to that, but that should have been there before nationals. We, if, if me going into raw nationals to get people top five, top 10 competitors to do it and have, you know, the head to head battle, there needs to be a reason that a national championship matters, that me winning raw nationals needs to matter for me to get to the next level. Sheffield is a perfect example of that within the IPF, right? You win USA Nationals, then you go to Worlds, you win Worlds, you go to Sheffield, right? Like there's a clear upward trajectory that values people going with those head-to-head -head battles and winning and getting all the way up. Currently, that's not the case. The Pro Series is not that way within USA Powerlifting. There's no real reason to do these meets. And, and that's a big problem as a competitor when like my interest is competitiveness or exposure that, that I, there's only exposure when there's other good lifters there. And when I looked at the roster, I recognized like two names per weight class. So that's bad, you know? Uh, so I don't know. I, I still am open to doing USA powerlifting for the remainder of the year because next year is really, you know, when I would actually be able to switch over for powerlifting American national. So there's not like a, an immediate timeline for me to switch over. I can switch over whenever I want. Um, I still wanted to go to Utah uh, to, to do that. That was one of the big reasons why I liked, I liked the location of the competition. So um, it, potentially I could still see out the rest of the year within USA Powerlifting. Um, I think that that definitely could happen. I could end up at Nationals, but I don't know. You know, and, and then there's a, a big part of this as well is I, I'm an SPD sponsored athlete uh, in my dog hair covered shirt. But I'm an SPD sponsored athlete and just watching what they are able to do within Powerlifting America and the IPF and all that, um, I have much, much more loyalty towards SPD than I do to any federation. Like if you look at their Instagram, YouTube channels, like what they've done with Sheffield, like they are directly trying to, to grow their athletes' brands, to grow their own brand, to grow the sport of powerlifting. Like they're really, really invested. And that's much more present within Powerlifting America, um, you know, SBD has a bit more access over there than, than USA Powerlifting, at least at the moment. Um, so, you know, that that's a driver as well. Like, I, I've had great experiences with everyone. I, I People at SBD have been great to me, and as far as I know, every other athlete, you know, has, has really, really good experiences with that. And so I'm trying to align myself with the people who have been good to me, and I can hopefully promote their brand as well. Um, so, you know, I, I think I'm kind of leaning that direction and, and I guess like on that note, I'm, I'm trying to get ahead of a little bit of diet stuff. Um, currently I, I sit about 109 to 110 kilos, basically right about 240 pounds. Um, so I'm starting to cut a little bit. So I was going to throw in a little bit of a, of physique, uh, check here, I guess, and, and, uh, going to be filming that. I haven't, I haven't filmed it yet, but I, I think this will probably, I'll show, I'll put the videos over this. Um, we'll see. I'm only going to lose like maybe three, four kilos, um, if I'm potentially switching, but you know, maybe, maybe in a, a few months I'll show a little, a little diet, uh, update here after I lose three or four kilos and see if there's any change, but maybe, maybe these videos will put any uh, accusations of steroids to rest. I, I think this is about the most natural body uh, you could probably ever find, but uh, that, that might be interesting. I've never done anything like that. So maybe you guys will find some interest in, in that kind of stuff. And maybe it's bad timing with, with next week being my, my hypertrophy video. So, uh, or maybe it's good timing, Who's, who knows? So I think that's kind of where, where I'm at right now with things. Uh, training is getting a whole lot better. I, I'm getting a lot more healthy at this point. Um, I, I haven't been in pain for a while and um, I'm not as strong as I've been, but I'm making good choices right now to be able to have my hip be fully healthy rather than like basically get healthy, then immediately like try to make choices to be as strong as I can and not all the way fix it. And then like be dealing with this for the last couple of years, which I have. So I think all that's moving really in the right direction and, and hopefully for the, I mean, foreseeable future, which I dropped out of the Arnold, which is a, a shit show as well. Um, USA Powerlifting got kicked out of the Arnold and now is saying they're going to have a different venue. But I mean, what, it's 
two months out less than that and there's no venue announced or anything so i dropped out before that because i was just trying to be healthy um but if that was the case now, I might be dropping out anyway. So yeah, I don't know. It's a mess. It's a mess with the USA powerlifting, but I'm feeling motivated. I, you know, I'm in a good spot. Um, really liking training where I am. Uh, stuff is is going well. Life as a whole. So um, this is. I'm heading into my day three. I'm about to do deadlifts after this. Uh, I don't know exactly how. I'm gonna finish up the rest of this vlog. Um, it, this is heading into the back half. This is my heavy stuff. Uh, maybe I'll do a little voiceover. Maybe I'll come back and talk later, but I've already done my first couple days of training. Nice and easy stuff. It's been pretty good. So uh, so we'll we'll get to training now, and we'll see you later in the week. If you got any questions on the USA Powerlifting stuff, hopefully I'll try to answer in the comments. But uh, uh, anyway, yeah, I guess we'll see you after training with the rest of the week. So we'll talk about training here a little bit. Uh, the deadlifts were pretty bad yesterday, and I, I think I, I alluded to that a little bit in my video kind of heading into it, that I, that I just wasn't really sure 
what that day was gonna bring. Just recently, my hip, my glute, has been giving me more troubles on deadlifts, particularly the top of deadlifts than really any other lift. And and just, it's been inconsistent on what traditionally has been my primary deadlift day. So generally speaking, my best deadlift day has been during the middle of the week. Um, I haven't deadlifted particularly well after squatting at the end of the week. And actually recently I've been doing only once a week deadlifting, but uh, recent weeks, especially kind of in my rehab stuff, I've been trying to deadlift a little bit more and get a little bit more exposure and, and kind of improve my positions. And deadlifting at the end of the week has been going great. Uh, so heading into this session, I, I really thought that uh, that might be the case and it ended up being a whole lot worse than I expected. Uh, so ultimately just kind of took the L there and did some reps and ended up feeling a whole lot better by the end of the session than when I started. And as we're watching this bench right here, there's something I'll talk about really hard 190. Um, but yeah, deadlifts ended up not being very good, but kind of adjusted to the things that I've been feeling overall. And moving forward, I think that's going to be my approach is that my day three will now be my secondary deadlift day from now on, a little bit more rep work. Fine, so be it. Uh, and ultimately, I ended up deadlifting very, very well at the end of the week, but I'll save that recap for later on. Um, the bench press has been a little frustrating. It's been like very close to being good, but I've been having to manage pec stuff. Um, actually, right now my pecs are great, and and so uh, it's been a little frustrating that my bench hasn't gotten above this 190 range. Um, but in this session, I actually am going to take a little bit of a risk and go after some uh, some more chest pressing exercises because I'm feeling pretty healthy. So adding in a little bit of that stuff and hopefully get the bench press going. So all around stuff is is moving in the right direction, um, feeling like I'm in control of the things I really need to be in control of, even though that deadlift session was pretty bad there during the middle of the week. It ends up being a whole lot better later on. So overall, I'm feeling really good about kind of the structure and the way I'm adapting to, to the things that I need to right now.
So, a few updates. I'm finishing editing up the video, and and uh, as as I posted earlier in the video, we we got an update on the Arnold mid editing. So I, I guess I talked um, more more shit on USAPL than maybe was deserved. I guess in the moment, uh, we we got an email a while back saying that that the Arnold organizers had uh, basically taken away their whole space and they were working to resolve it, but it wasn't looking good is, is really a couple of emails that we had gotten uh, and then, you know, radio silence for a few weeks on that. And as I'm editing, we get the email that, that says that they they got the space back and it's bigger and it's going to be in the main event center as far as I understand the email. So uh, I guess... USA Powerlifting worked it out and made it happen, so uh, you can disregard any criticism, I guess, around that one. So I guess it's going to be uh, even better than it was before. So there's some credit there. Also, uh, I woke up to an email this morning saying that you know, as a pro, I was invited to uh, Raw Nationals, which we were expecting to happen, uh, as I said earlier in the video. So I guess I'm gonna sign up just to give myself the option of doing that competition later in the year. Um, I, I would expect to do that most likely. There's not really a big reason not to. I do have to do a competition between now and then, though, because my total from last year's Raw Nationals is so bad when I competed when I was hurt. My, my total probably at this point would not get me into prime time. So uh, I will be doing some sort of meet to just make sure I have a total that will put me into prime time. Assuming there's a prime time, there's still, you know, who knows. Uh, but yeah, so I, I guess at this point, that's the plan. But as far as wrapping up the training week, yesterday's training was really, really good. This is week two of this block. I'm currently running four week blocks. And particularly on squatting, I'm just running a nice little linear progression. Uh, this block, the loads will get heavy. Um, hopefully, I'm planning on tripling 300 kilos in two more weeks. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm doing ascending singles or ascending triples and then a single afterwards and just making 20 kilo jumps and then pushing that up by 20 kilos a week. It's it's pretty submaximal at this point, right? Like I, I don't know that I would be able to to sustain that. We'll see um, after maybe next block. I think I'm gonna plan on running this kind of stuff one more time. Um, but this week was a triple with 260 and then a single with 280. I did some back down sets. They were really easy, I didn't show them. Um, and then next week, everything will go up by 20 kilos. So I should, if things are feeling good, hit a triple with 280 what I did with a single this week. And then next week will be a single with 300. And then after that, I'll just go after that triple with 300 will be will be my big goal uh, to, to wrap things up. And ideally it'll be fairly easy. I, I'm, I'm expecting it to be relatively easy, you know, RP seven or so. Um, I, I've hit that before. I've done my best with 300 kilos. I've done five reps with it. Uh, I've done a three by three with it in a session. So, but it, you know, it's a very, very, good weight. Like I have to be strong to be able to do any reps with it. I mean, even singles can be pretty challenging. So uh, if I do hit that in two weeks, I'll be feeling pretty good about where things are. So squat is, is definitely moving in the right direction. One thing I didn't add in my voiceover earlier is how much I really think that belt squats are helping me right now. Uh, you just getting that, that full range of motion, uh, particularly the pitch shark, feels really, really comfortable. And I, I really, like a lot of times I'm leaving those sessions, even starting the, the belt squats, feeling kind of banged up even after deadlifts. The deadlifts got a whole lot better as I went, um, and, but then even heading into the, the belt squats, I was like, eh, kind of cranky. And then by the end they felt great, which, you know, is a cool thing at this point that I, I feel really comfortable with the way that I'm approaching training and it can set up some good stuff, even when my hip was not feeling very good in the middle of the week, that I still can feel great. I, I mean, I felt genuinely very, very good yesterday is when it was when I was squatting uh and then deadlifts uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise like I was expecting them to feel good I've been having good training uh but they felt very very good warming up I've been training almost exclusively with straps up until this point because the straps make it a good bit more comfortable for me off the floor uh take away a lot of the discomfort that I that I've been getting overall but uh yesterday was my first 700 pound single without straps since nationals, I guess. I mean, it's been a while of, you know, pretty uncomfortable training and it genuinely pain-free, felt comfortable, felt good, felt confident. Uh, you know, all my deadlifts right now, I'm kind of pacing, uh, well, squats and deadlifts. You can see the squats, like I'm not moving fast at all. Uh, everything is just like very controlled, but you know, on, on purpose. 
Uh, and it felt really, really good. So I'm excited about that. I will be doing that as a single and then some back down sets moving forward. And I don't, I don't know, like I'm kind of winging it on Delos right now. Uh, just, just playing it, uh, by, you know, every week. And it'd be great to pull something 350 or more here in two weeks, but, but we'll see. I'm not forcing that one at all. That one has been behind as far as discomfort, but it feels really, really good. So, um, at this point I'm in a really good spot. It, it would be interesting to have, because the plan ideally, or what it would have been heading into the Arnold would be at the end of next block. At the end of next block, that would be Arnold week for me. Um, so I was anticipating, uh, it, when I dropped out of the Arnold, I was anticipating that I would probably be pretty strong heading into the Arnold. I'm feeling pretty strong right now, but I wanted to be able to make these good patient choices and not feel like I had a meet I had to prep for and had to like make decisions to really show up. Um, and, and so at this point it, it looks like I probably could have done the Arnold and, you know, hopefully, I mean, would have performed well, it's how it's looking, um, you know, six weeks from now, but I don't know that I would be comfortable making the same choices and like where I am mentally is in a really, really good spot. Like I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with it right now and like getting better. And I, I feel like all the things that I've said about being healthy for the long run are, are absolutely there. So I'll just like sign up for a random local meet and just like show up and hopefully do pretty well uh, and set that as my total for raw nationals, which I guess I'm signing up for and I guess I'm doing is, is where we're at. So anyway, uh, that's where life is at right now. Training is good. Life is good, and hopefully we keep on building and, and keep hitting some big numbers. Um, but anyway, if you've made it this far in the video, I appreciate it. I'm gonna, I'll put up the program. It'll be on uh, my website. I'm probably gonna be running the same program a couple times in a row, so we'll see. I'll, I'll keep putting them up, I guess. Uh, but just know the program that you're seeing on there is getting tweaked, you know, in some places, as it always is. Uh, so anyway, I appreciate the support from everybody. Uh, if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.